Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. So a ton has happened at SIGGRAPH with NVIDIA this week, but I wanna talk about something a little bit different. So looking forward to what GPT-5 from OpenAI might be, we have to answer the question or at least start addressing the question, um, how many GPUs are needed and where are those GPUs actually even going? And I promise the next video won't only be about GPUs. So I found this tweet the other day and this is from a guy named Leo Pulovitz. He's actually a general partner at SUSE Ventures. They're a CVC that's funded companies like Robinhood, Flexport, and Mux, to name a few. He went to Caltech, so you can say that these guys kind of know what they're talking about. And he offered some commentary on a post from a very interesting website called llmutils.org, which has done a lot of incredibly deep analysis on LLMs, GPUs, and how they interact in markets to drive prices and just the supply of GPUs globally. So there's a question now that with OpenAI still accelerating forward with progress, um, how many GPUs would actually be needed to make GPT-5? And what are kind of the business fundamentals of what's going on here, not just with NVIDIA, but for OpenAI as well? So starting with GPT-4, we basically know that GPT-4 was probably trained on somewhere between 10,000 and 25,000 A100s, which in 2019 to 2018 was the creme de la creme, top of the line GPU you could get for doing any of this kind of work. We know that Meta has about 21,000 A100s, Tesla has about 7,000, and Stability AI lagging behind, at least with their internal cluster, has about 5,000. So you can start to see why Tesla has actually built out their own cluster called Dojo that doesn't actually use NVIDIA GPUs. And ironically, they measure their performance and their cost per performance metrics against NVIDIA A100. So the A100 has become the benchmark for, for how much GPU compute costs and moreover how good anything that's not an NVIDIA GPU performs relative to that. Falcon 40B was actually just trained on 384 A100s. So this uh, kind of shows that, you know, depending on how you build your models and how your software is put together, you might actually, if you use some really sneaky tricks, not have to need tens of thousands of GPUs. However, with what we know from OpenAI and what they've said about GPT-5 so far, uh, more importantly with what they've shared uh, in terms of how they've been improving the performance of ChatGPT, not focusing on some of the issues with inference or accuracy, we know that it's probably going to take GPT-5 anywhere between 30 and 50,000 H100s to train. And this is according to rough estimates by Elon Musk. What's interesting now and what's informing a lot of this is that huge companies that just do financial things are actually starting to jump in on the game of buying GPU compute. And BlackRock, curiously, a few weeks ago, tried to actually buy an entire GPU hosting company for their GPUs. And Morgan Stanley has also sort of put out estimates a number of times this year that point to GPT-5 maybe using somewhere in the ballpark of 25,000 GPUs Regardless, it's just going to take a lot of GPUs to make GPT-5. And to put this in perspective, the um, Google Cloud Platform, and basically these are all of the publicly available GPUs that Google rents for sale, they only have 25,000 on their own. And Azure at this point, so all of Microsoft servers, and this is not just public facing, have 10 to 40,000 H100s. So what's nuts is in order for this to work, Azure would likely have to just about double its capacity just to keep up with what OpenAI is using because unless they just completely remove anyone else using them, which likely is a greater profit um, for Microsoft than just renting them to OpenAI since they're now owned by Microsoft, some curious things are going to have to happen. And really this informs the bigger question of whether or not Nvidia actually has the demand to keep up with this huge surge in value and basically whether or not NVIDIA is actually as valuable as a lot of people think it is. And one of the bigger insights that I found really interesting here was this thought here that if you read into this kind of in the right way, um, basically the highest demand NVIDIA products right now are InfiniBand connected H100 GPUs. So this is not only the GPU itself, but it's the NVIDIA infrastructure that interconnects all of them. And what's kind of interesting here is in theory at this point, per year, NVIDIA can only make about 400,000 H100s, or at least that's the demand that they've claimed to be able to keep up with. So that, that puts their revenue at about $15 billion a year. Um, their first quarter revenue, if we look at raw dollars, was about $4 billion. And so what's crazy is, in theory, if NVIDIA can keep this up and TSMC can prevent being 
wiped off the face of the earth by a Chinese invasion, it looks like NVIDIA is actually on track to ship 400,000 H100s this year. They might actually even make it even further because the first half is looking to be right around $12 billion. And you may have to wonder what's still left with the Delta there, but it'll be definitely interesting to see. One thing that I do think is interesting as a caveat that um, this other Twitter user mentions is that the estimated demand for the H100 GPUs uh, isn't just tied to the factors of AI. Um, there are other growth factors at play here. Um, the adoption of cloud computing, the adoption of fewer uh, terrestrial and or bare metal clusters that aren't actually hooked up on the internet to make some of the investment back if you buy these. Because um, obviously if you buy these, you run them and you're not using them constantly. You're losing money every time you're not using one of these GPUs to actually produce something of value. So the supply constraints for H100s might get really interesting if anything happens in Taiwan and going forward with um, some potential trade hiccups with China. So we still have to see if orders will actually convert to actual GPUs because a lot of the earnings numbers from NVIDIA actually correlate more so to contract commitments, not actually GPUs delivered, which is another curious factor here. So I'm going to link the, uh, this website, um, llmutils.org. They, this article is way too long for me to condense into a single video. So there are a few analyses here that I think are actually quite interesting. And I want to go over some of these in closing. So the first question is, if you can't get H100s, why can't you just use um, like one of the plethora of more plentiful lower end GPUs? And the answer to that basically is that H100s are actually the most cost efficient to do this work with. They're the most powerful and yes, they're the most expensive. However, they offer the best capability in terms of performance per watt if you're doing LLM training. And there's also a question of, you know, if it's not AI, like what are all of these being used for? And the answer is they're just long-term contracts that were agreed to before AI was such a big deal. And those are pretty much just waiting to time out and then see where they go. Um, most of the GPUs in the cloud, as wild as this is, are these eight GPU HTX H100 SXM servers, which are about as dense as we can make H100s right now. They're pretty much equally good for training and inference, which wipes out any real offering AMD would have had in this realm. And I think the biggest surprise to me in all of this is that the biggest driver of demand for GPUs, generally speaking, is startups. It's not massive companies like Salesforce. It's not Google. It's actually just startups trying to do new things that, in this case with AI, the hot new thing happens to take eye-watering amounts of expensive GPU compute. So there is a question if, you know, macroeconomic things change, that, you know, at that point, the huge demand for this could fall off a cliff overnight. However, I hope we don't end up there, and we'll see how this all goes. So I'm excited to announce kind of one of our first unofficial sponsors, um, Vast AI. Uh, is now supporting the channel. So curiously enough, uh, if you want to rent a uh, commodity GPU or have some of the lowest GPU prices for rentals on the planet right now, um, please check out our link below to go to Vast AI. We're gonna start making more content with them and hopefully a few other sort of commodity GPU providers. The cool thing with this is you can rent someone else's GPU and you can do it way cheaper than um, Amazon or one of these other companies will. And with Vast, you also get um, direct support. Their team is incredibly responsive. And yeah, so check them out below. As always, if you found this video insightful or interesting, um, please give us a like or a subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.